It's Thursday, October 1st, 2020. Before we start the show today, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel. If you have already subscribed to this channel, make sure that you hit the bell notification button down below so that you are alerted with the newest videos. Share this video with everyone you know, everyone you don't know, blast it all over your social media. And lastly, make sure you come over to my Patreon channel. I just uploaded a new video yesterday. We'll be uploading another new video uh, this weekend. And we're gonna talk about what's happening politically, socially, how you need to be preparing, how you need to be training for the events that are coming to America. So make sure you head over to Patreon. Thank you so much and thank you to everybody who has already come over. So let's get right into it today. This economy has flown off the tracks. We are witnessing a nightmare at this point. Uh, it, it's amazing to see that the markets were all up across the board today. Dow Jones up 35 points. When we got continuous bad news, we got some really ominous news today and it's never ending. It just continues every day. But the stock market doesn't care. It could care less about the real economy. It could care less about you. It could care less about jobs. All it cares about is the Federal Reserve and how many more billions of dollars the Federal Reserve is going to inject into these markets to keep them on life support. Jobless claims came in this morning at 837,000. So that means 837,000 people last week filed first time unemployment claims. Uh, we now are heading eight months into this where we have lost 800,000 plus jobs a week going on eight months. And yet we're being told that this is a V-shaped recovery. We're being told not to worry. We're being told that everything's gonna be okay. We're being told that everything's going back to normal. Are you kidding me? Anybody that believes this believes in Santa Claus. Disney to lay off 28,000 employees. Uh, this, this hits home because Disneyland's about an hour and a half from my house. I used to live in Fullerton, very close to uh, Anaheim, where Disneyland is located. And uh, I, I remember driving down the 91 in the morning, watching all those people coming in from Riverside and Corona, coming in to work in Orange County. And thousands of those cars were people coming to Disneyland for employment. Well, now 28,000 people at Disneyland aren't going to have a job. Disney has been hemorrhaging money. The company reported a loss of $1 billion in operating income due to closures. Both California Adventure and Disneyland remain shuttered. So all those people that were driving to work from Riverside and Corona, people that uh, live in Orange County uh, that are employed by Disneyland, what are they going to do? How do they pay their house payments? How, how do they pay their rent? How do they pay their, their, their auto uh, bills? What are these people going to do? And yet we're being told about the big housing boom and whatnot. Well, 28,000 people now won't be buying a house. They're going to be lucky not to lose their house. And then right after this, right here on CNBC, American and United move ahead with more than 32,000 furloughs. The furlough begins today. As I'm making this video, they are getting rid of employees. 32,000. So 32,000 there, 28,000 at Disneyland. That's 60,000 people today. Uh, who got some very, very bad news, who have been laid off. 60,000 people between three companies. But the news gets worse. Shell Oil plans to cut 9,000 jobs in transition plan. So there's another 9,000 right there. So it's getting harder and harder to um, hide reality. Hollywood Reporter, LA top shopping streets struggle amid collapse. We have vacancies throughout our city. So LA... Uh, has been hit really hard uh, because of the drop in tourism. Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, uh, they are being flooded with for sale and for lease signs and vacant buildings. And I can relate. They're, they're all over this area here. Palm Springs, Palm Desert, La Quinta, Rancho Mirage. We are flooded, inundated with for sale and for lease signs and vacant buildings everywhere. Uh, if this can happen in West Hollywood, if it can happen in Beverly Hills, if it can happen in Los Angeles, if it can happen right here in Palm Springs, uh, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, it can happen where you live. You know, uh, somebody wrote me last week and they were offended that I called their town Mayberry, that, uh, I've, I, I, that I have an issue with small towns. I love small towns. If, if you live in a small town, God bless you. It's probably a much better place to be right now, without a doubt. But if you're in a small town, the economy's doing well, great. You should be thanking God tonight. You have a job, that you, li that you live in a small town, that things are doing well. Um, 
please don't be offended by me using the term Mayberry. Um, I love small towns. I love Mayberry. And um, I, I don't mean to offend anybody by, by that term. What I'm saying is things may be good in your small town. They may be good in your Mayberry. But when they're not good in big cities like New York, in LA, when they're not good in resort towns like Palm Springs and Palm Desert, um, this is a real uh, bellwether, a real barometer to what's happening to the economy nationally. Uh, you know, if you live in a town with 2,000 people, is that really reflecting uh, the U.S. economy? No. Uh, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, uh, bigger cities that employ large amounts of people who have uh, huge uh, retail shopping areas. Uh, this is more of a reflection of what's happening in the U.S. economy. So if you live in a much smaller economy, if you're in a small town and you're doing well, God bless you, really. Um, you have a lot to be thankful for. But what's happening in, the, in these larger cities, what's happening in Beverly Hills, what's happening in Los Angeles, what's happening right here in Palm Desert, it can happen to Mayberry. It can happen in a small town. So be prepared for that. Rodeo Drive is just three blocks long. It has nearly a dozen vacant storefronts. Michael Kors, Lacoste, uh, Toomey, and Piget, to name a few, have all closed. Melrose Place is seeing the same plague of closures. Vacancies up, business down. It's hitting everyone. It's hitting uh, many, many counties out here. Orange County, uh, Riverside County, San Bernardino County. Uh, I, I've been through them all, and I'm seeing the devastation. And yet, some areas are doing very, very well. There are always going to be uh, areas that do well. Uh, there's always going to be um, exceptions uh, to the rule. But overall, you can really see uh, people hurting, businesses hurting, restaurants, retail, it's all hurting, commercial real estate getting pummeled, and uh, we're seeing it popping up all over America. So if you are in one of those small towns and you're doing well, if you're in a big town doing well, thank God tonight that you are. The Hedge today, retail on pace for most bankruptcies and store closures ever in one year. Just to name a few, I just wrote down a few on this list I wanted to go over with, with you. Steinmar is closing all 281 of its stores. Lord & Taylor, all 38 stores. Asina Retail Group is closing 1,000 of its 2,800 stores. GNC closing 726 of its 2,633 stores. 24 Hour Fitness is closing 135 of their 445 gyms. Stage Stores closing all 726 stores. True Religion closing 27 of its 87 uh, jean stores. Pier One is closing all 991 of its stores. We have one out here. I think we have two out here closing. SFP closing all 254 stores. And if things couldn't get worse, uh, here is another real warning of why you better be preparing federal government to conclude fiscal 2020 with record spending. Uh, says right here uh, in uh, NextGov, even without data from the month of September, the Treasury Department reports total federal spending exceeded $6 trillion for the first time. This is a guarantee to continue to kill off the dollar, and this is why you better own precious metals, gold and silver. They both had a really, really good day today. Uh, the dollar is no doubt on borrowed time. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have some. You should. You should have some dollars put away for a rainy day. But how long is the dollar going to be around if we keep doing this? We're killing it. We're smashing the dollar. This is smashing your purchasing power. This is going to guarantee more inflation. America will see hyperinflation, no doubt, with this behavior. Um, you know, I, I'm saving dollars, but it scares me because it seems like every day, they ha every one of those dollars has less and less purchase, uh, the ability to purchase less and less. U.S. personal income tumbles in August. Savings rate plunges. Income tumbled 2.7% month over month, according to the hedge. Savings rate tumbled 17.7% to 14.1%, down 60% from the highs. U.S. manufacturing surveys suggest the outlook has darkened. Market PMI disappointed, dropping from 53.5 preliminary to 53.2 final for August. That's on the hedge today. Half of Americans over 55 may retire poor. I think that number is going to be much higher. August pending home sales soar to a record high fueled by rock bottom mortgage rates. And also, they are including refis in those housing sales numbers. WolfStreet.com 
subprime, no problem. FHA mortgage delinquency hits record 17.4%. This is uh, a real wake up call here as uh, the media is telling us how great everything is doing in housing. The reality is this, FHA, which insures about 8 million high risk mortgages with lower requirements, low down payments, low closing costs, easy credit qual qualifications, it reported that an all-time record of 17.4% of its mortgages were delinquent in August, up from the record all-time all-time record in July of 17%. This is double from a year ago. Serious delinquencies, 90 days plus, up 11.2%. This is also a record. Back to the hedge here today. 9-11 system goes down across the country. Was it a test? That I bring this up because it, this really uh, fascinates me and it really raises some red flags. Here's another one. Major hospital system hit with paralyzing ransomware attack, potentially largest in U.S. history. Uh, here's another one. Twitter goes down for more than an hour, leaving thousands of users worldwide unable to access, uh, access the, the website and app version of social media platform. And I, I bring this up because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. We are so uh, 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 subservient to our phones and the computer and, you know, using plastic cards, uh, debit cards, credit cards in order to buy goods and services. Um, they can shut it down with one flip of a switch. They can shut it down in a mere second. Uh, we talk about cyber attacks, ransomware, hacks, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, the system can be attacked. It is um, subjective to attacks. The system, I believe, is very fragile. And if they want to shut it down, they can shut it down in the blink of an eye. That means that plastic card you use doesn't work. That means those cryptos you use are going to be very difficult, right? Uh, that's why I'm, I'm old school. I'm not here to attack anybody that's uh, in cryptos. I, I believe in diversification. I have nothing against them. But be diversified enough to make sure that you, that you are holding assets. Remember, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Make sure that you have cash reserves put away where you can access them to, get to them. That doesn't mean in the bank. Make sure you have gold and silver that you can access. That doesn't mean in a bank. And it means you better be holding the physical gold, the physical silver, not the paper. If you need to trade something and the system's down, you're out of luck. Uh, if you need to go to the ATM to get cash, you're out of luck. If you need to go to your bank, you're out of luck. If you need to access uh, uh, something with your phone or your computer, you're out of luck. You don't hold it, you don't own it. So make sure that gold and silver, that you have it in a safe place and that it's physical. Make sure that you have cash that you can access uh, when you need to in a time of emergency. Uh, again, this is why I'm a big believer in real assets. Uh, again, I'm not attacking cryptos, more power to you. Uh, believe in diversification, but if the system goes down, are you gonna be able to buy and sell with cryptos, if you can't use a computer, if you can't use your phone. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Have a phenomenal day. Have a phenomenal rest of the week. God bless every one of you. Thanks for watching. Make sure that uh, you're praying for this country and make sure that you continue to stay on course and prepare for the worst and pray for the best. But I believe we're gonna see some very, very rough times coming to America. We're seeing it all unfold on a daily basis now. Uh, the market melt up is a big warning. It is melting up. It is, it, to me, it's very concerning. It's very scary. We are seeing the biggest bubbles in history. They are going to burst and there's gonna be a lot of carnage when they do and a lot of opportunity. If you're putting away assets, if you're putting away cash, you're gonna take advantage of the sales. And I think a lot of people are going to do extremely well. God bless every one of you. Talk to you very soon.